Hi guys! So the last stage of our Hive project has come when we are going to paint the whole thing into a very nice color. Let us quickly see what there is to know about painting wood for outside. So there are two types of wood, treated and untreated, which depends if it had been painted already or not yet. So painted wood usually already has a layer of paint. Okay, that will be our worn paint. You basically just add one layer or most recommendedly two layers of top coat from uh, a top coat paint. That's it. And that is because painted wood doesn't absorb as much moisture and paint eventually than untreated wood. The absorbency levels of raw untreated wood are skyrocketing so basically it sucks up every drop of paint that's put on it and if you applied a top coat on raw untreated wood it not only would stick less efficiently but you would need buckets and buckets of paint because it would just suck it all up that's why for untreated wood you have to first apply a primer layer a base coat which is basically the equivalent of uh, our old paint here and then you apply two layers of top coat like that so here we have uh, the primer which is for untreated wood and on top of that comes the top coat let's see also very important if you compare these two the base coat is way cheaper than the top coat so for untreated wood you want to waste the cheap stuff and not the expensive one also also the primer helps bind the top coat with the wood underneath so that's a plus also 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 for pre-finished wood you might only need actually just one layer of top coat which is again a plus And then there is one more thing we might want to tackle. Let me show you. Actually before painting you might notice a number of imperfections in your wood. And for that you just use wood filler. It's this uh, gooey putty basically. And you just apply this into the wounds. This does not only hide the imperfections, but also helps when painting, because it would be easier to paint afterwards. You can use it to cover cracks, to fill in cracks basically, or cover nail holes, screw holes, bug holes. Here I have the two gaps where the joint was far from perfect, but only we will know. And the bees won't even believe it used to be from many pieces. Even such huge cracks can be covered up better than the Kennedy case.
And of course, once it dries, it can be sanded as necessary. You just apply it generously and then scrape off the excess. Let's leave this to dry for a bit. All right, it's still me here. I just had to postpone painting the hive in favor of higher priority projects. So let's just paint it now. But first, uh, these are the patches I made with uh, the wood putty. So we'll just have to sand it with an orbital sander. And to show you a good example, I'm gonna wear my dust mask because uh, sanding is really the operation during which you want to wear a dust mask in order to protect your lungs. And of course, ear protection doesn't harm you either. The reason I'm not removing my dust mask for 5 minutes is because particulate matter are still flying around like that and then like that and they would get into my lungs here so that I'm not still waiting for, for some time, you know. So we have these. I guess I have the same stuff in here. As this one. Let's try and open it up. You always want to mix it up before use. Now that the surface of the wood is as smooth as my eyeballs, it should stick nicely. Ah, mentioning eyeballs, did you know that the eyes of bees have hairs growing out <laughs> from the eyes of the bees? Yeah, allegedly they have the bees sense uh, air pressure better and wind direction. But anyway, who would want hairs growing out of their eyes? That's kind of insane. Ah, and uh, about the color. I gave out a poll last time and I asked you what color you think I should uh, paint the hive. And I chose this uh, pigeon blue because, <laughs> because <laughs> this is what I have. <laughs> it's that simple. And as I have noticed, hives and beekeeping equipment, but mainly hives, uh, tend to be in this color in Hungary. And I tried to Google it on the internet and I could not find why in Hungary beekeeping equipment and hives are painted mainly this um, 
this grayish blue, bluish gray. So if you're watching this and know why Hungarian hives are uh, always blue or this grayish blue, then please drop me a message because I would like to know. The skids uh, could have benefited from a little bit of primer but I'm not gonna open the primer can for two strips of wood so I'm just sacrificing a little more of this uh, top coat also I made these uh, skids because uh, they will be uh, the parts exposed to most wear so these are screwed on and when I, whenever I need to replace them, I just replace them. That's why I was thinking not even painting the skids into this blue color. But if I painted them, they would last longer, so why not just paint them? Okay, now that the bottom of the hive is dry to the touch, we can put on the primer for the lid. Well, this is not the primer. Let's put it back. Here it is. I guess pouring was not the best idea of the week. But anyway, everyone needs mistakes. According to folklore, you should never paint the inside of the hive. So I'm just gonna paint this bottom edge and leave the inside unfinished. Well, a few weeks have passed yet again, and uh, it's time to give this one a second coat. As you can see from the growth of my hair, time flies by like a rocket ship, and uh, I didn't have time to finish this because I'm full of higher priority projects. But now that it's raining outside, then I cannot stand. Uh, the bees are doing the gardening either. Uh, well, let's just give this a second coat. I just had an awesome idea. Let's execute. For my awesome idea, we'll need any screwdriver bit that I don't use regularly. And a piece of tape. Like that.
Aren't I a genius? <laughs> now tell me. <laughs> okay, now that I have it stirred properly, let's wrap it up. And last but not least, we have the lid, which again should get one coat. Actually two coats, because it only had the primer last week, or the week before last week. So one coat of blue today, and one maybe tomorrow, or next week, or next month, or whenever I have the time to do some painting. On the end grain, apply more generously. Now I have a paint scar on my forearm. I love these paint scars. They are not, not as painful as real scars. Still, they look as good as real scars. If you have red paint for these, it's even better. I'm not sure if paint scar is a word in English. I guess I just invented a new word. And judging from the thunder, it still is raining outside. I guess that's it.